You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day therapy session. Justin, I cut you off. You're about to say something, I'm sure, positive and optimistic. I know. Actually, I was saying it's the first ever show that we actually need a sensor button for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we just get the little black box that goes across the mouth and just I mean, buzzer like every three seconds. <laughs> it's, I, I, I'm all, like, it's, it's, uh, I'm speechless. Like, this is, it's, I, the game is still going on. This is the first time we've ever start, started a game early. I put an invite out there as well. If anybody wants to actually dial into this event, feel free. Jason, I see you in the queue. We had Blaze earlier. If you want to dial in and vent, please feel free because this is a game that deserves some venting. Like, there's no excuses. This this was one of the worst Badger games I've ever seen in my fandom, Justin. Yeah, um, this team needs to be gutted. Like the the culture and the inside of this team, like everything that Fickle thought he was coming here to keep going, needs to be burned down and reset. Like I don't know what to make of the coaches. Uh, I, I they didn't do a particularly great job with this game or this season, I don't think, but they are coaches that have previously in their careers been strong coaches. So I have to look at this and say, based off these players, the last three years, the players are a huge part of the problem. And the foundation of this team stinks. Like they are not good players. They're not mentally strong players. They do not play mistake free football. And they consistently have the same mistakes week in and week out that they've had since the beginning of the season. And that to me is a problem. Like this is not rocket science. Like football is not that complicated. You have a job to do on each play. You have typically it's one thing you need to do. If all these guys just do their thing, we're good. But we don't have one guy that's showing up as a positive right now. Like everybody stinks. It's across the board. Like at some point it's like you'd expect somebody to show out and show some promise. We're not seeing it. The the one promising thing I saw in this game was Christian Allegro having that huge sack. And it was like, wow, I really like the level of athleticism that kid has. Like he's got some some quickness and some burst that is going to be a problem next year. He's a starter next year. Allegro's a starter next year. Yeah. Uh, without let's, bring, a doubt. let's bring Jason in. Um Jason, man, what's up? You're joining the show. Just remember, this is a family friendly show. Anger is absolutely permitted, frustration's permitted. Um What's going on, man? How are you today? Disgusted. <laughs> I mean, it, that's an understatement. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the defense play has played not well, but it showed up for every game but this one. It is disgusting. And how many missed tackles in the first half, and how many times playing off on third and six, third and seven, third and yeah. five. Okay. We're catching the ball, first down. We're moving forward. Yeah, we're Our giving way too much. Pushing. Should be much better to what it actually is. And then we're sitting in a situation every time the offense starts actually moving the ball. Oh, false start. Yep. Holding, Holding penalty. I mean, our best offensive lineman, Jack Nelson. <laughs> oh, he's definitely not our best offensive line. <laughs> well, the thing about it is he is probably our best offensive lineman, but he's not a tackle. He's a guard. He's never going to play tackle in the NFL. He will no, play guard in the NFL because he's a mauler. He's a bruiser. He's mean and tough and, and all that kind of stuff, but he cannot handle anybody that gives him a power rush one time and then a speed rush the second time. Yeah, I – it's questionable with him. I, I think like he's he's a huge guy, so I don't know how many teams are going to want a six eight potential guard in the NFL. But he is. I mean, you're not wrong. His skill set fits far better for the interior than it does the the outside. And quite honestly, like Ryan and I were talking about this outside of this. I don't know how bad Rucci could possibly be to have a player that's giving causing this many negative situations for your offense and you can't put him out on the field just to see what he is like Justin, unless you think he's going to get your quarterback killed we just scored a touchdown by the way oh did we wow great good job getting that done okay 24 okay. 10 <laughs> all right congrats Jason. i'm so proud 
Jason, I think you <laughs> summed it up really well with your first sentence there. It's just this this was a terrible performance. It's it's difficult as a Badger fan to 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 put it into perspective. Um, I'm gonna get Blaze on the show, Justin. Thank you so much for for jumping on, my friend. Uh, Justin, I, I'm sorry, Jason. Justin, what, you were about to say something. I cut you off. Yeah, I mean, in, in general here, one of the big things that we're I'm really struggling with, and I know you're struggling with too, is accountability. Like we have players that are making stupid mental errors and mistakes consistently, and our record is awful now this season. Like we, right, we're at we're at risk of not making a bowl game, and I'm not necessarily sure this team deserves to make a bowl game based off of how they're playing. But I do look at it and I say, why do we keep trotting the same guys out there that are keep doing the same boat ahead of mistakes week in and week out? And it's like, you can't tell me that you can't at least ride out some of the mistakes by the younger guy who may at least do some promising things when these guys are doing nothing but bad or average play. Like we're not seeing plus plays from anybody. Like the, yeah. the offensive the offensive stud right now is probably Pauling. Outside of him, and, and I and you and I we we would probably say he's been he's been solid, but I don't know if he's been spectacular. Like he's gotten the job done, but he hasn't had like huge plays. No, it's it's really hard to point to the bright spots. I want to get Blaze on. He's been in the queue for a bit. Uh, Blaze, what's what's going on, man? How are you today? Uh, been better. <laughs> It's all right, though. I mean, second half, it felt good. I mean, ugh. the defense, What's like, up? Oh, like defense started, stepped it up, but they were terrible in the first half. You know, once you get down by that much, it's just mm-hmm. like, man, oh man, you can't crawl yourself out, especially with this offense. It's like, oh, and the five yard <sighs> passes, it's like that's the only thing we know how to do. And oh. half the time, that's a drop, so who knows if that's even gonna work. Yeah. The, the, well, I especially liked our, our offense in the start of the fourth quarter where we were averaging like a, the pass attempts were like one yard. And it's like, cool, we just we reeled off 25 yards of offense and it took three minutes to do it. This is how we're going to play the fourth quarter. Like, I'd rather have you attack and have incompletions than, than play this we conservative. Slow too. They were playing yeah. slow. They weren't mm-hmm. speeding up like they should have. But if you speed up, then that means that you're going to get the ball back. Here, so. Well, we make mistakes <laughs> either way, so I don't know if we can. It doesn't matter if we play faster. Uh, it just sucks listening to the commentary. Like we're winning, or we're like all these teams. Even last week, I mean, I don't know, I'm just frustrated. I don't know. No, so I think you sum it up though. Like honestly, Blaze, like you. You're talking like my brain is thinking right now. I don't even know what to make of this because th- there's this element of people that are frustrated with the roster and Paul Christ and the recruiting efforts, but Northwestern's not a good team. There's no, not talent not. on this team to not get – I mean, Northwestern dominated we're, us. We're talent. more talented than them. We we honestly – we we just do not play clean football at all, and that has been the problem the entire season. And you have to look at it at some point and say – talk to these players and be like, you're not getting the job done. I can't keep putting you out there when I know what I'm going to get. Like at this point, you know what you're getting from Jack Nelson. He's going to have at least two negative plays every single game, every single game. He's going to have a holding or a false start or something that's going to disrupt a drive and potentially kill it for you. So you have to like, in my opinion, like he's undraftable for the NFL because the way I look at it is there's no way somebody's going to look at somebody that makes this many mental errors and thinks that this is a guy that they're going to put in that in that room when you can get a guy who will at least do the little things right and maybe be more physically limited. Yeah. Now, I, I don't understand. I want to get into the young players after this. we got to take a quick break. Mm-hmm. Blaze, I, I want to say I like the Bobby, your, your man cave there. It, it looks like a nice place to <laughs> at least watch a game. Well, we got uh, a tree. Oh, the tree's up already. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely now, love listen, it. I love Christmas as much as the next guy, man, but I need at least after Thanksgiving. That's it does my life. <laughs> It does feel early, Blaze. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. Thank you for jumping on the show. Coming up, Justin and I are, are going to talk about the young players. And just, like, what – I think Justin and I both talked about this. If we're going to get beat like this, I – Can, can we with guys who might grow from it? I it, Right? I would think so. All right. Let's take a quick break for our friends over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors, I've talked about it a lot. I've talked to Justin about it a lot. My cars are, are problematic. They, they just are – uh, Kendrick's in the queue. We're going to get to Kendrick in a second. eBay Motors is oh, eBay Motors is where I go to get all my car parts for all my my rides that barely run, and they barely run only based on the strength of eBay Motors. 
Get all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay guaranteed fit, you take the guesswork out of it, Justin, because you know me, I would guess wrong. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, Justin, I want to I want to get Kendrick here, but I want to ask you first. Before you jump in. Am I the only person here that thinks Ryan is driving around in the car from the Beverly Hillbillies? No. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. That's probably an upgrade on the ride. <laughs> here's here's the thing that really frustrates me, Justin, among many. Like, I am – I'm so frustrated by this. I, I said several times throughout the game – we talked about this before the game when we asked the question, if Tanner Mordecai is healthy, is he going to play? And I think we all said, what's the upside? Yeah. Like, what what is the upside of playing – veterans and getting beat 24 to three when you can play young players and get beat 24 to three, but maybe they can build on something. I, this is where I'm, I'm struggling. I don't know. It, it's we're on the same page there. I, I don't know what the upside is. And honestly, I don't listen. You can argue that someone like Evers isn't ready to be playing at this level, but neither is any of the, none of the other quarterbacks are either. Nobody has looked capable of leading a consistent offensive effort this entire season. So unless you think that, Evers is just going to be sitting there rifling the ball up for grabs left and right. He, I trust him by far to be a guy who's at least going to make the off or the defense uncomfortable with his legs. You can simplify the game plan, and maybe maybe that's the problem. They don't want to have to simplify it to the point where it becomes paint by numbers for the defense too, where they kind of have an idea of where it's going. But it seems that way already. Like this is terrible offensive football right now. Nothing yeah. that we look at. We can't hang our head on anything this season. The running game stinks. The passing game stinks. Like, where, where are you going to go with this offense? Like, there, we, I was hoping from the beginning of the season we looked at it. We said, you know, this will hopefully grow and we'll find some things that we can consistently expect to, to be able to attack as the season goes on. We never found that. No. It has never happened. It's incredible. Like the, pa- the passing game has been inefficient the entire season. Let's get Kendrick in here and, and see where he's at. Um, what's up, man? How's how's the vibe? Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, bad. <laughs> Is it, like, where I, are you at on this team right now? So, one, I, I, I want to harken back just for a second to what you were just saying of what's the upside of playing Mordecai? Well, now it's that you need a win. You, yeah. you need one to get the yeah. bowl eligibility. To at least get like, the extra practices. Right. Right. I mean, you've been talking about since McIntosh hired Fick. Like these these two guys, their their destinies are tied together now. And McIntosh doesn't want to be seen as the guy responsible for snapping a more than two decade long bowl streak. That's mm-hmm. that's a horrible look for him on the job. But from the very beginning, I want I want to go back to something Justin said at the very beginning of the episode of we need to flush the program, flush the roster, find guys who are actually into the culture of the program. I don't necessarily disagree, but I think the fact that that's the conversation we're having now is really, really concerning because through all the changes, we're bringing in brand new offense, we're running a new defensive scheme, bringing in a guy to head coach the program who doesn't have experience with Wisconsin. All of the things we as fans and Luke Fickle, the coach, thought regardless of how many changes there are going to be, the one thing we can hang the hat on is the culture, the the intangibles within the program. Now we're questioning whether that's there. That says, like, I don't know what positives there are to look at in the program. If that's the one positive we always thought we would have, I don't know what it I don't know what the positives are because this game looks like. I thought we were supposed to rock bottom out at Illinois mm. last year. Mm. I thought, thought we were supposed to rock bottom out at mm. Indiana last week. That's what we where thought. where is it? Where I, is I, rock bottom? Because now I I don't know. We we keep going. We keep moving down. Well, doesn't the it, way. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, just really quick. I want to then I want to get you just. But doesn't it feel like that goalpost is continually changing? Right. We keep saying this is this yeah. is rock bottom, cool. and that goalpost keeps moving. And part of my concern is you mentioned you know uh, the upside is you need to win with Tanner Mordecai. Is 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 he, are you, are you even confident in that? Though, I don't right? know. I'm not confident in any of the quarterbacks. You got three points up on Northwestern. Like I, I'm not attacking your viewpoint on that. I think it's a fair viewpoint. But no, like, I'm not. I'm not. To be fair, I'm not. I wasn't saying it to say like you got to play Mordecai because of that. I think that's the justification right. for it. I, I think that's the justification in the room of 
we need someone or they think they need to raise the floor, I guess, with with him to do well, it. I, I don't know. Here's here's the deal. They came in thinking that the the culture that they were coming into was tough, tough minded, disciplined kids. And we knew that last year that that wasn't the case, because that's exactly why Paul Chris was fired, because we played a game against Illinois where the team just rolled over and played dead. And I think that that's one of those things where it's like you come in and you want to believe that that's the case. We lost that attitude with this team. And it's happened over the last three years where it's degraded, where it's like the dudes that were out there that were just like, I, I don't care. I'm going to, if I have to break my arm to get to the quarterback or do whatever on defense or on offense, the offensive linemen who are just like, I don't care how it gets done. I'm going to get it done. Even if it's ugly, we don't have any of those guys anymore. We have a bunch of people who start making mistakes whenever they they get pushed a little bit. So I think, my, and I saw, I don't remember who said this. It was a throwaway comment I saw on, I don't know, Twitter or somewhere. But somebody said, because you said, it's been over the last few years. This has been mm -hmm. building, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think something changed in the program, in like intangibly around the pandemic. Nothing has been the same since the 2020 season. And maybe we can go back a little bit earlier to the season coming off the orange bowl win where, you know, then you end up in the pinstripe bowl. Things are a lot worse, but like after the COVID season, everything was supposed to be high flying after the Illinois week. And then players got COVID and then nothing has recovered since then, mm -hmm. since then. Um, and it's that they've, they've continued to get punched in the mouth. You used to see teams get punched in the mouth by Iowa and come back, get punched in the mouth by Minnesota and come back. Like, Aside from the win at Illinois, where is like a signature comeback mm -hmm. win for this program in the last three years? You're 100 percent right, Justin. Like the this team where can't get game where we've come back. Imposed our will. Period. Like yeah. I can't remember one anymore where we just seven ran it off. down somebody's throat. Remember when we used to play a team like Purdue and run for like 450 yards because oh, yeah. we would just push it, push them around, and run it down their throat. What? My God, that seems so far removed from where we are now. One of the things I said last week is we need to understand that Wisconsin, this is with the Scary Alvarez podcast, who, by the way, said that was rock bottom, the, the uh, Indiana game. Um, and then I said I said that as well, by the way. So I'm not it's coming again next time. week. Just Give wait. us time. We can do it. I'm not putting Scary <laughs> but one of the things I said is the Wisconsin mystique is gone, mm -hmm. right? The, the idea that we can roll the ball out. And Jason, I see you in the queue, by the way. I'm going to get you on here next. Robert Sorensen in the queue. But the idea that we can roll the ball out and push Northwestern, Indiana, Illinois, Rutgers around. That's gone. That mystique is gone. And I, I don't know. One of the topics I put up here, and I want to get your guys' take, is I put the blame game question mark. Where, how much, how much blame does Luke Fickle and this staff have for that? Well, here's part of my issue with some of this because we look at it from the offensive line standpoint. Does it not feel like the offensive line is kind of taking their reputation from the press clippings of prior generations? Like they think that they're a lot better than what they actually are based off of what we've seen from them over the last few years. They haven't been great. Like we haven't had a great offensive line and and we can probably go back and even discuss when Taylor was here, how much he bailed out some of those yeah. lines. So I don't know the last time we had a dominant line, maybe 2017. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but well, you know, looking well, at maybe. it from this standpoint, blame game, there's definitely blame for the coaches. Like they're, they're not blameless in this. But this team just seems so apathetic in terms of their effort at times and like just being locked in and mentally ready to play and do things that I like, I don't know how to really assess anybody on this because it's like, it's all interlocked. Like I look at it and it's like the coaches are trying to do their best, but they can only do so much. Cause like the players have to go out there and execute. Like somebody made the comments. We had a third and one pass or third and four was it? And we threw it like one yard or something like that. And I said, Listen, Longo's not telling that receiver to go out there and run a one-yard route so that he can go and run for the extra. He's telling them to get depth. It's on that player to go out there and run the route to the appropriate depth so that we can pick up the first down. Like at some point, we have to look at it and say it's it's failing on multiple levels here. Like we're not there's so much that's going wrong that it's all connected. Yeah, there there is something, and and I think uh, the contingent on of listeners to this show that are also Packer fans kind of get this too, right? How are you supposed to evaluate a Jordan love, for example, which is the big question over there rather than, you know, the head coach transition over here when 
you, you don't have an Aaron Jones for a big chunk of this season. Their offensive line situation mm-hmm. is awful. It's the same bunch kind of, of young, thing over bunch here, of young right? Wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah. How how are you supposed to evaluate? Oh well, how how really effective is a three three five defense for Trestle over here when you you have a starting uh, you have a starting defensive back who was playing D two football a year ago, right? Yeah. Which is you know not not a knock on nice four cream, but that's a huge jump for anybody to have yeah. to make. Right. Yeah. Um, and in, in that scheme, especially when the rest of the defensive backs on the roster are not used to playing that, that scheme as well. How are you supposed to evaluate an offense in Phil Longo, a brand new transition Good when question. you have a quarterback who broke his throwing hand three mm-hmm. weeks ago or whatever it was, right. When you have a banged up Braylon Allen, although I don't love that excuse because banged up, and Braylon Allen is uh, in oxy. It, what's the it's, word? It's uh, redundant. It's redundant. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, when you don't have another running back to compliment Braylon Allen, like you would love to have, it, it is so hard to evaluate where this team is going, which is why you, one of the things I said when I first jumped on is I don't know where to look for the positives. Um, it's hard to evaluate anything when there are so few of them to go around because at least most of the time you can point to one player and be like, they look yeah. really good. Maybe that's Will Pauling. Um, but apart from that, I, I just don't know. I think um, he's someone that you can keep, but I don't know outside of him who I look at and you say from an offensive skill player that you're like, this guy is somebody I can look forward to making plays going forward. Right. And I think that you, that's you would, where we're he's struggling a good, with this team. But he's not even a number one. And yes, yeah. I got, take a quick break uh kendrick i'm kendrick i'm gonna let you go really quick because i want to give chase and robert and curtis in as yeah, well yeah, but, for sure uh, awesome comments man I, I awesome 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 insight the one thing i would say is this was always a scott frost argument it's not just and bo Pelini, by the way it's not just losing games it's how you lose games like mm-hmm. i i can give this staff a pass for the roster they inherited i can't give them a pass for going down 24 to 3 against northwestern at home oh yeah right they're, they're an element of losing and then how you lose matters. And that's kind of where I'm having a hard time drawing that line. We got to take a quick break. Kedrick, thank you so much. Uh, Talk to you again for sure on the next one, hopefully. Um, Justin, you're frozen. I don't know if that's just you or me. Justin is frozen in anger, if everyone can see this. Um, He is – that's perfect, Justin. Um, Hopefully we get Justin back. If you're listening on the podcast on audio, he is just staring straight ahead frozen. Um, We want to take a quick second and – Say thank you to our friends of the show over at Jace Medical. Jace Medical, you need to be empowered to protect your family. That's why I have food squirreled away, the dehydrated stuff that lasts for 20 years. It'll outlive me probably. I got the water straw where I can go drink from the stream and hopefully not get sick. Jace Medical gives you life-saving antibiotics that allow you to take care of your family in case there's an emergency. You can't do the pharmacy, supply chain issues. That's what Jace Medical does. Plus, you can get 12-month supplies on your daily medications. Go to Jace Medical. Be empowered to take care of your family. Get $20 off with the code Locked On. $20 off your purchase. Use promo code Locked On at jacemedical.com. All right. Let's get Jason on, on the podcast. You're up next, my friend. Thank you for being so patient with me. Um, hey, I'm uh, Wisconsin. Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course, man. You took the place of Justin. He, I think he rage quit. Like, but no, I appreciate it. Uh, I guess where I'm at right now, Ryan, is I feel, I mean, I was angry uh, during the game watching it. I mean, uh, we start down the we start the game, march down the field, um, and then we settle for a field goal. And immediately after that, we let Northwestern march down the field, and they score a touchdown. And they were ten for ten starting the game on third down. And I just felt defeated. I mean, I'm not even angry anymore. I just feel defeated as a Wisconsin Badger fan. That that ten of ten on third down. Um, and welcome back, Justin. I thought you rage quit. That. <laughs> That Computer tenet, issues. How how can you defensively? There you you're just not locked in, right? You cannot allow Northwestern to go ten to ten on third down. That's that's incredible. Our it almost played. seemed like every single time uh, there was a third down, a Northwestern guy would be completely wide open. And uh, what what happened in the, the first touchdown? Like miscommunication with uh, Zach Man and um, yeah, that can't be that. happening ten games into the season. Like you should not be having deep or like communication miscues. 10 games in like yeah. you guys need yeah, to know what you're doing completely frustrated and i give alan credit for starting the game but i mean you know the the you know, the ship has sailed on him i don't know i mean mordecai is a tough young kid but I I, I I there's so many problems with this team 
I really don't know what, uh, again, to hang our hat on, what uh, we do well. Our offensive line's a mess. We can't run the football. We are third and long constantly. Um, our defense played well in the second half, but, I mean, you're already down by three scores. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I was going into the season, I was probably the most excited and most looking forward to this season in quite some time, and it's been an utter, um, you know, disappointment to say the least i think that's been everybody i think everybody was super excited for this season and what we didn't realize like the foundation of this team was rotten and then we're just not doing anything else particularly well either like the coaching staff it almost feels like they've punted on this season at this point but then we're looking at it from the accountability standpoint it's like well, yeah, but these guys that you you, like we're clearly going to be flushing some players like there's going to be guys that they're like listen it's it's not in your best interest to stay. We're going to have to find upgrades at this position and sorry, but you know, it might be better for you if you go somewhere else. And I, I just don't understand why you're not looking at some of these younger guys to find out if they're at least a piece of the puzzle, because if you're starting Jack Nelson at left tackle next year, I got to help you because he's, he's at a penalty and, I think every game this three season. He, he had three today. Yeah. Three holding, too. It's not like he was getting the false start. I would have taken the false starts. He, he accounted for negative 30 yards to the offense today. And, and when were we going to see some of these uh, red zone packages for uh, Bryson Green? Or um, I mean, uh, it just seemed like uh, we got down there, and I guess I don't even remember. I was just so aggravated. Uh, you know, we, we tried to slant there. but uh, yeah. All right. Jason, I, I'm going to let you go, man, just because I want to get Robert and Curtis in. I, but I'm going to dive into that question real quick, though. Yeah, um, let me really quick. Jason, where are you calling from? I, just because that's oh, Phoenix, I'm Arizona, there. guys. Oh, I, <laughs> my whole married, dude. I was born in Tucson. <laughs> All right. Dude, thank you so much for calling in, Jason. I really appreciate it. Trust me when I say we share the frustration. All right. Have a good one, guys. I'm Wisconsin. I'm Wisconsin. All right, Justin, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I I think that the offense, the secret's kind of out on it. They've just, teams have just started to blitz us when we get in the in the uh, red zone. They're like, all right, we're just going to come because Mordecai drops his eyes anyways and he never throws the football. He's going to end up running it. Like, and it was a little better with Locke in that regard, but he wasn't great either. Like, they get pressure on him. The offensive line just stinks. Like, they do not hold up when teams start to come at them. So I, I don't know what to do with this offense anymore because it's there's nothing that they're doing well. Like you'd like to believe there's one game, pl- like one big player that you can rely on, but I'm sure Pauling they're starting to bracket and do some things with to keep the ball away from him to an extent. And you don't have anybody else that's stepping up and making plays when they do do that type of stuff. So it's like, what are you? What do you, you do? Had, you also had Bacos miss a. a- 40 yard field goal. Uh, Robert, man, what's up? I know you're in the discord. You've been on the show before. Like, yeah. Are you where we're at? Uh, all, all I can say is, uh, you know, we, we don't have a good Badgers team, but we got this uh, community, you know, so that, that's, all, that's <laughs> all I got. <laughs> well, we can all devolve into alcoholism together. I got, I got no uh, positive uh, motivation for this team uh, right now for this year. So all, all uh, I got is this community. <laughs> I do want to throw this up there. Michael Morley, earlier he had put a comment up several weeks ago. It said Wisconsin, Nebraska. Me and Scary got on him. That's not what he meant. But he he's now saying this team is worse than Nebraska. This year it is. Oh, it is. I think it probably is this year, Mike. And I told um, Ryan the other day that I thought right. that the remaining three teams that we had left to play were all playing cleaner, better football than what we were because they had developed as the season was going on and Wisconsin hasn't. So I don't know what to do from that standpoint because I don't expect us to be the cleaner team in that game, which leads me to believe that Nebraska will make enough plays to beat us, even if it's an a, ugly game. Let's let's try going four, four people. Let's let's get 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 Oh, you got to back. Yeah, I uh, well, I just got out the. I was I, uh, fourth quarter. I was uh, doing a little exercising, so you know. <laughs> I, I've, I, I've, I've, been I've been there been before, before when you need to do that. that? <laughs> oh, ooh. curse! We got to we got to mute you for a second, person. buddy. Uh, that echo is crazy. Um, yeah. Every time we're talking, it's it's cycling back through whatever your mic is. See if you can switch mics. We'll bring you back on, guys. I, I know we talked about this. This has been in the Discord. I, I'm curious where, where everyone's at. Robert, Justin, like I'm not out on fickle. Like I know some people no, are not at all. Out. 
You need, they need to chill on that. Like you can't do that when a coach comes oh, yeah. in the first year when it's not his roster. You get he gets at least three years in my book to to show progress. And by year three, you're hoping that things look significantly better than where we're at. Like if we're if we're not winning nine games in three years, then I'm going to look at it and be kind of like, because I do expect the talent to to go up quite a bit on this roster. And there's there's guys to look forward to next year already. Like Allegro, we saw today, it looks like he's got some physical tools that are really going to be positives. Anelu is going to start next year. I if if not start, he's going to be in an obvious passing downs because he already I've watched the film I've watched on him. There is not a chance that he is not going to drive tackles nuts with his yeah. motor and how fast he comes off the edge. He's got bend and he's got quickness, and that's going to make people go nuts. We don't have that right now. There's nobody with his motor on this team. Ryan Eiler says, for sure, he shouldn't be fired, but absolutely can be criticized. I think Oh, that for is sure. Good. There's that's definitely criticism. Yeah. This has not been a good season, and they have not maximized what this team should have been this year. I think we'd all agree on that. Can you, uh, can you guys hear me now? Uh, yeah, much better. Yeah. yeah, much better. Oh, perfect. Okay. Lucky I had an extra set of headphones. Um, so I think I'm in a different place than everybody else in general, and it's not that it's, I'm more positive. I've always been kind of the positive one, but – I'm in a different place in the sense I think I'm looking at these losses differently. Um, I, I, Brian, I sent you a big ass text earlier in the third quarter, or the second <laughs> quarter, whenever the game was. I haven't seen and, it. Uh, yet. My, yeah, my observation is this: I think Fickle's lost the locker room. And when I say that, I don't, I, I don't mean disagree sense, with that. And 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 when I say that, I don't mean in the sense that he's a bad coach and you know he is just not connecting with the players, not doing the right things. There's not buy-in. He he's always going to be the stepdad coach. Mm-hmm. This is Paul Chris' team. 75% of this is Paul Chris' team, including the recruits came in last year because that's when they were recruited by. Uh, when adversity hit this year, the team, this isn't the guy that they signed on to play this year. Yeah. This isn't the guy they signed on to go through adversity with. So they right? shut this down. This isn't the guy that yeah. they wanted to play. So they shut down, right? You see it. This is you can, you can see it when you watch the game. Everybody's talking about all oh, these players aren't good, all these things. I mean, it's somewhat true. We do need better players. But the reality is it's more on the fact that they're just not playing at their potential yeah. at all. We've seen every player they're on this team. They're not mentally engaged. Yes, exactly. And so because of that, you see what we see on Saturday. You saw the second half. I think Northwestern probably finished with negative yards the second half. When they turned on, they're a better team than Northwestern. We're a better team than Indiana was, right? Power ratings wise, we'll probably be favored in the last two games. I don't think we should be, but we probably will be because from a pure power rating perspective, we're a better team than what we just put out. The problem is the team's not there. They're not mentally there. And so it becomes a game of what do you do as a coach? Do you try to put the best player who you think are the best players in? Do you try to you know, say, you know what, screw this crap, the whole thing. I'm just going to put in freshmen, which you'll still get smoked because they're freshmen, right? So what's the decision at that point? But kind of where I see it, I don't put a lot of stock into anything X's and O in these last two games because outside of a few things here or there, and there are there is a lot of blame to go around with the coach. I'm not trying to let them off the hook. A lot of it is just the guys aren't there. They're not playing. They're not making the plays when they need to. You call a, a play, you pass wide open, you drop the ball. Mordecai doesn't see Braylon Allen breaking on the backfield wide open. You know, uh, guys are shrieking open down the field. You don't throw it to them. Like, these are not because of the coaches. Now, you could say that, you know, the coaches should have done a better job of winning over this team and maybe done a better job of, you know, trying to instill their culture better. I mean, sure, that's fine. But it's – I mean, this is the real world, right? You're talking with, with 18, 19, 20-year-old people who have varying forms of investment you know, are making money now. It's kind of a wild time. I'm sure they're getting calls to transfer. It's a, it's a different world now. And so it's tough. And so I'm not, again, I'm not trying to absolve guilt from the coaching staff because they could have done a lot better job in a lot of different things. But this team to me, I don't put stock in looking at the players and looking at what we did in the sense of, oh, you know, we're, Longo's doing a terrible job calling offense or, oh, you know, Tim Radike is really not the guy or, you know, uh, Bryce, Bryce and Green is just not showing us what he had. Like these guys can do it. We've seen them do it. They're just not doing it now because they're not locked in. And I don't know if you save that. I don't know if you can fix that. I think the only solution, it goes back to what Brian Smith said. you got to give it a year or two. And I know Badger fans don't want to hear that. You know, that's the last thing everybody wants to hear. But I think going back to sort of what you guys might have talked about earlier in the, in the, in the, in the conversation, um, the core was worse than we thought it was. It was. I mean, that's, that's just what it was. Curtis, I want to ask you on this because mm-hmm. I'm curious if you have the same thoughts as me, which is that you need to clear this the roster. There's there's clearly people who are not bought into this, and if they are not showing that they're going to be bought into it, you have to clear them. Like you can, yeah. As much as you want to keep kids around and don't want to get rid of scholarships, if they're not invested in what you're trying to do, those are spots that can go to players who can come in and help you, and 
you you owe it to yourself if you want to reach your goals as this team to find players that are going to be invested in what your process is. And I think that mm-hmm. that's something that has to happen this off season. Well, and I'll, I'll place it, phrase it actually as a couple, okay, and I agree, I, I do agree, and I think there's a couple of caveats I'll have to that. One is, look at what Northwestern did. Those guys, we made them look like Michigan, but mm-hmm. they played hard. I mm-hmm. don't think any of us, of us would argue with the fact that we probably have a more talented roster than Northwestern. Mm-hmm. We beat them by 40, 45 to 7 last season. We beat them 35 to 7 the year before that. We're a better team than Northwestern. But they played better. Why? Because they're bought into Braun right now. They're bought mm-hmm. into what he's doing. Mm-hmm. They're playing at their peak, and we are not, right? And the reality is, sometimes you got to make the tough calls in terms of either getting people to go on the portal, maybe sitting people doing what you feel you need to do to move forward. I think, and I don't know if this, I think it was maybe um, Ryan Anderson said this. I don't know if he said this on one of his dairy rate podcasts, but I I'm inclined to agree with it. Um, you know, basically we're at a point where I think when fickle came in, you know, there's, there's always been such a good culture at Wisconsin. And, and he even said when he came in, Hey, I don't want to blow that off. I just want to enhance it. I want to bring it on. But I think that good culture might've been a little bit, going down and i think it's been going down for a few years now Mm -hmm. and you know he comes in trying to be the you know the the, the good step that you come in like you know i'm sticking with my step down there he comes in saying like hey i'm i'm you know i'm the cool dad i'm I'm just here you know you i I want you to be you we're just trying to have a good relationship and now i think he's got to come in the next season and basically lay the line down and say hey look Mm -hmm. guys if you're not in like we'll we'll make it work because we need to move forward this way and if you guys aren't bought into that transfer leave whatever Mm -hmm. like the time of trying to save people from transferring from this team i think it's gone Oh, yeah. I think he's like, look, if you're looking to transfer, go on. That's fine. Hey, best of luck to you. You know, I'm not going to say anything negative about you, but at the end of the day, we need people that are bought to what we're doing now. And that's the only way we move forward. Well, and that's pressure, kind of where I think I wasn't at that a couple of weeks ago. I think I'm at that now. Yeah. Well, the pressure is going to shift to him right now. Yeah. Like this yeah. offseason, the honeymoon period, we talked about it. The pressure now shifts squarely to Luke Fick this offseason, I, right? So I, to that point, the one thing I would say really quick, though, and Ryan Eilers brought this up, a few people brought this up. I do feel like, and I, I agree, I feel like fundamentally I agree with a lot of what you're saying, Curtis, but as Ryan Eilers says, isn't on the coach to galvanize them. Several are comments about you got to get them to play hard. The, at some level, If you, I will say this, and this is where I slightly disagree with you, Curtis, a little bit. I don't put it all in fickle. I never have. He inherited yeah. a lot of this. But at some level, you still can't go down 24 to 3 to Northwestern. Like, Listen. You just can't with – a roster. So I, I got some comments is, on that too. But is I'll, I'm going to jump in here because based off of that comment, and I agree with Curtis's kind of stepdad thing, it is his job to galvanize them, but they can only be galvanized if they want to join in. And exactly. he, he can't force it. So he can come in and if they automatically from day one are like, I'll give you a chance, but it's a half hearted one, which I think is why, which is why I said that this year would be a bigger year in terms of roster turnover than what the last year was, because I think what fickle was able to do was to get the players to say, give it, give me a chance. And now it's going to be all the kids that were, have been a year in the program and seen the way he wants to do things that are going to say, this isn't for me. I'm out. And that's what we're going to see going forward. And I kind of made the comment that I don't know if this is true or not. We haven't seen a lot of offers go out in this 24 class anymore. It wouldn't shock me if the staff has, move their efforts to what the transfer portal is going to look like. And oh, it's yeah. trying to identify, Hey, we're probably going to have 15 to 20 slots here that we're going to need to fill. You guys go out there and find me guys who you think are going to potentially be jumping in that we can target because we need to upgrade at these spots. And we need people who are going to invest in this program and do things the way we want to do. Them. All right. Uh, really quickly, Robert, I'm, I'm going to just drop because I only, I can only get four on and yeah. I feel bad, uh, but I want to get Mark in quick too. I'm just kind of trying to cycle through. Robert is awesome on Discord as always. It is great to see you. Um, better times ahead. We have volleyball and hockey. Volleyball and hockey. <laughs> no. hey, basketball played well for for even the loss. That was yeah. a, that was a Anyone who's ball. negative on that, that is you know? not what we yeah. saw last year. That team yeah. loses by twenty five last year. I thought the ba- like people were so down on basketball. I know it's not a basketball show, but I thought they accounted well. Robert, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, yep. Definitely see you next time. Yep. All right, let's get Mark on. Mark was in the queue for a while. He's been on the show before. Mark, if you're still there, jump on. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a couple of comments, but continue this conversation as well. I still continue, and Tyler Streberg, I think, kind of agrees with you guys. Ryan, you're minimizing these guys from Northwestern. You know, based on the level it once has. Those guys have bought into the coach they have. Again, echoing kind of you guys are saying that. Our guys yeah, maybe I mean, not. We're more talented. The we were not locked of, in. Well, but, I was going to say, one of the core tenets of leadership, like as a leader, when you're when you're managing a team, right, like, you know, it, 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 everything ultimately falls on you. But what does that mean? Well, you know what else falls on you is who is on your team. One of the most important things a good leader does 
is prune the team when you need to prune the team and then find great, great people. That's, that's mm -hmm. your job. Like you're more than anything, your job as a leader is to find great people. And as soon as, you know, people that aren't really fit in what you're doing are there, you get rid of them because they're not going to help the team move forward. And then ultimately the end of it falls on you. And so, yeah, a lot of this does fall on fickle 100%. But at the end of the day, I think he tried to be too nice. In my opinion, I think he, I, I, I agree with that issues. Too. And I think he wanted to be liked more than he wanted to be effective. That's kind of the vibe that I got. And that's what I think Ryan had said that maybe Ryan Anderson said that like a week or two ago. And when he said that, I was like, man, that sounds, I, I feel mm -hmm. like that, that kind of might've been what happened. So, you know, I mean, all this is speculation. We'll see at the end of the season. I'm really yeah. curious who leaves and who doesn't, but that's kind of where I think we are because I don't, I haven't lost faith in the staff um, and I haven't lost faith in the talent of the players. I just think that, Correct. I think that, you know, yeah, I just think that, I think that we just, you know, haven't been able to gel that at the level we needed to gel it at. I, honestly, I think you're there. You're right there because I'll look at this in comparison to somebody like Leap Leipold going to Kansas where there was nothing established there. And he came in and effectively said, this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to win here and we're going to do it my way right off the bat. And he made it very clear the, what his expectations were. And I feel like Fickle tried to kind of massage the situation a little bit more than just coming in and being like, this is how we're doing it. I don't care how you did it before. This is how we're going to do it if we're doing it my way. And I've won with my way. So let's go ahead and we're going to dive in and do it this way. And and he didn't do that. And I think yeah. that he tried to, to to be a little too diplomatic in it. And your job as a coach, you can be diplomatic with the press. You don't need to be diplomatic with your team. They need to know who's in charge. Yeah. Well, let, and, let's and jump. Badger Bormoth in the comments, real quick. I'm not saying the coaches aren't blamed. The whole reason we're in this mess is because of what we said. The coaches right. caused this problem by not establishing the standard that needs to be had. The There's blame across is, the board. I'm, yeah, the difference is I'm not going to sit here and flame them and say they're bad coaches for making that mistake because that is a mistake and they need to fix it. If they don't fix it, then yeah, they should be fired. But right now, they have an opportunity. That they they made the wrong call. They thought it was something. They were wrong. Now you got to make that change moving forward. And, you know, if we're going to sit here and say, well, they're not good enough to do that, then you guys are, I mean, it's it's like, I don't know where we go from that. Like if, if Fickle can't make up for that mistake, right? Like that's where I think we're, we're getting into a place that it just doesn't, there's not really anything to build off of from that. Unless you no, want to go I back to, that. you know, something like, like I'm that. not, I'm not throwing you know. Fickle out with this season mm -hmm. for sure. Like I still think it's a good hire. I want to jump over to Mark, who jumped on, been on the show before, uh, during happier times and moments. Uh, Mark, <laughs> what's going on, man? I tend to disagree with you guys. I think this has to do with Longo and Tressel. Like, they, they were hired to improve. I know it's the first year, but they've got to be better than this. Like, but, only, like, but, three points against, or, like, this game, Longo, last week, too. Like, he hasn't shown, like, the air raid, like, Mm. It promised. I don't. I think they need to move on from Lago. See, the what I take away from this is looking at it is these coaches have produced at a high level at other programs and for extended periods of time. So I have a hard time looking at the coaches and saying it's all the coaches that are the problem here when we know that they've been quality coaches in the past. Now Ryan and I talked about this a little earlier when we when I was in full fire mode earlier. Um, yeah, and when I said flat out you came in with guys who had produced at a high level at other spots and you have an off or a, 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 a roster that has not produced at a high level over the last three years. So I'm much more willing to say, give the benefit of the doubt to the coaches than I am to the other, but there's a problem here with both right now. I yes. think they both need to be cleaned up. And I think maybe Longo should have just been stricter with what he wanted to run, which was, this is what I'm comfortable with and what I've run in the past and be damned. I'm not going to sit here and kind of, bastardize my system to make it work for Wisconsin because Wisconsin's ground and pound. Like you need to figure out what's going, what you do well and run that. And Don't Derek, Mark Derek's with you. He says, I'm with Mark on Longo. Literally looks like we won three plays on offense. It's not that simplistic, but it, it, it's not no. working. No, no. I, I think we're all. So by the way, I think we're all on the same page. Like there is blame everywhere. Like the players, the, the fit, the, like the coaches, like they're, there's no one thing you look at and say that right there. That's a hundred percent of the reason of why this went off the rails. Like this has not gone well for a lot of reasons. And I think that's what everybody's saying. And, and, and the bigger scheme, maybe the blame game this year doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah. Everyone here agrees. Fickle is going to get in our year. Should get in our year. You got to clean it up this off season. That that's it. You got to clean it up this off season. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we lost Chris or Curtis. Sorry. I think we're wrapping up here anyway. Uh, Justin, any last thoughts? Mark, any last thoughts? We'll take a couple comments. I'm, I, um, I don't know if you guys saw this. I posted this on uh, the chat. Um, but Fickle said he, we might be seeing more people out this week. Like transferring out because um, um, let me look. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Like there's definitely going to be, Justin, you've hit on this. There's going to be roster. Over I've said this for a long time. It was going to be at least 15. And that was simply going to be because there are going to be at least 15 players that are going to look at what the, that they played this year. And they're going to say, I thought I was going to get more opportunity or whatever. And they're going to say, I'm going to go someplace that's going to give me a shot. Because I, I, the, the way I look at it, too, I think look at um, the two closest examples, I would say, would be Florida State and Texas, mm -hmm. because their first seasons were horrible mm -hmm. and we were making fun of them and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I guess it's karma because, you know, Florida goes and Florida State goes and loses to Jacksonville State and everybody's clowning them. And then, you know, now they're what undefeated still. Number, yeah, like, yeah you look at them this year. Mm -hmm. It's a different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the recruiting class is an outstanding class coming in. Like we're adding talent. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I was going to say, too, is is because I was thinking about, and, and I, I don't know, if Mark, if you're the one that made the comment about the coaches. Um, but one of the things I thought about kind of where I, where it's give, I'm giving them the benefit of the dollar of players is I saw this team last year. This is the same team I saw last mm -hmm. year, right? And that was under Kristen Leonard, right? Now I'm seeing this team again this year, and that's under Fickle and Longo and, and Trestle. And my question is, what's the constant? You know what I mean? There, there's mm -hmm. one constant in that equation, and that's the team. You know, mm -hmm. so is that is that on because I mean, is that on? I mean, is that on Kristen and in, 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 uh, Leonard? Is that on Fickle and in, in, in the current staff, or is that on the, the players on in, on the team? Right? Like, who's who who is that on right now? So, but but when I say I, I want to give the coach more benefit of the doubt, is because I did see this exact same thing last year with the same players. And so, when you cycle through the program, you get the new players, and if it's still like that, then yeah, that's on the coaches. You know, but but. If we cycle through, get new players, we go into next year, and like we might not win, you know, ten games, but let's say we win seven, eight, and the team the whole game is playing its ass off at, the, at mm -hmm. as hard as it can, uh -huh. then and you know, you okay, glimpses? yeah, was, yeah, yeah, then you know, okay, then it's a talent thing. We just got to build that, and it wasn't the coaching staff, mm -hmm. right? But if you see this again in the next two, three years, you know, two years from now, you're seeing guys. That's when that's when the coaches will get fired. Well, what like, if I had asked you happen. at the beginning of the year, and I think this is an unfair question, but I'm going to ask it. If I'd said Hey, we're going to win five or six games this year. We may not win the bowl game. We're going to lose, or we not may not get to a bowl game. We're going to lose to Indiana, and Northwestern's going to throttle us. Would anybody honestly say that's fine because it's year one? I, I don't think anybody would have. And no, I, I, I think your points. You're making great points, Curtis, and I, I don't disagree necessarily. But it's well, still at some level like this is still a, you. I, it's I think, unacceptable from a performance standpoint. Well, my question then becomes, what do you think would happen if we didn't fire Chris? Where would we be now? It wouldn't have been bad. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. still in favor of the that, that's, that's That's because if you ask that question, that would be my follow-up question. Like, well, where do you think we would be if we didn't do that? And that's, and that's where I'm wondering. I don't, I don't know where we would be if we did. I mean, that's, you know. If all, there's a chance if we say, didn't have him, had Mertz decided to leave after last season, that we could be a one or two win team this year. Like, with what that quarterback room looked like, Prior to this happening, you're probably starting Burkett. Like that's that's just or Wolf. Wolf would have been potentially the starter. Like I think we forget how awful the quarterback room was and how little upside there was coming into this. That it's like, man, we really did not have. We're, we're not in a good place there to go forward, which would have made it really ugly in terms of what we wanted to do offensively because we did have no passing threat. Um, looking at this, I mean. I don't know what to say, like going forward, like I think people look at the the recruiting classes that we had and a lot of people want to look at it like we had all this talent that came in in 21 and 19. And it's like people are pumping that up bigger than what it was, because a lot of those guys have not turned into dudes like all those four stars we got. How many of them have turned out to be plus players like all conference types? Any? Do we have any? Hunter Wooler. Well, 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 Wooler's like the only guy. I, I like we Wooler's may have some offensive linemen take over the defense by himself. Either. Yes. I mean, he's more like the ultimate safety valve. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> we looking at the offensive linemen and which is the spot that we've recruited at the best. Like there may be guys that get some all conference there. They don't deserve it. Like they're getting it on Wisconsin offensive line reputation. 
I don't not based think off of what they play. I don't think based on reputation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, don't think I, I mean, historical. Play. I'm talking historically. Like, there, we haven't seen great line play in a while, and I think we'd all agree with that. I watch um, a lot of football on Saturdays. This is one of the worst offensive lines that I've watched this season. This is – it's it's a tough year. All right, I, I think we're going to wrap it there. We're kind of talking in circles at this point. Obviously, we're all Badger <laughs> fans. We're all – we're all frustrated. Um, we're looking at, you know, it is what it is. This is not what anybody's here for. I think everybody here still thinks Fickle deserves the, I know there's talk about I, Fickle deserves the off season uh, in my, it's not even a question in my opinion. Uh, guys on Wisconsin basketball Providence this week. Um, really quick. Let's, let's round table. Hey, this. I'll, what, I'll what, give you a positive. All right. I don't know if any of you, so you had said, you had said, uh, Justin, you had said all these other teams are playing cleaner than us. Go check the Minnesota Purdue score. That'll make you feel a lot better about this. Yeah, game. about this one. Yeah, Minnesota <laughs> apparently has decided like we're gonna start getting better, like, and then like we're gonna end the season as bad as we possibly can. They're like, hey, Wisconsin's playing bad. We let's can show win them. them. Let's go all in on that really quick. Let's go around the table. Let's finish on this record <laughs> prediction down the stretch. We got two games left: Nebraska, Minnesota. Guys, Mark, we'll start with you. What what do we finish down the stretch? A one one worst case zero two. Justin, I'm going one and one. I think we lose to uh, Nebraska, and I think we find a way to win like three to nothing against Minnesota because we're both we both stink. Yeah, Curtis. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go one and one too. I think this is the one year we give Fickle to beat Wisconsin, and you know then they get that monkey off their back so they never beat us ever again when it matters. And I think that uh, you know watching watching what Purdue did to Minnesota today was. Yeah, I think that I think we win that game. I think we find a way to pull it out, you know, mm-hmm. at the end. Brendan says 0 2. Badger Bormel says 0 2. Ryan Obermeyer says 0 2. I'm going to say 1 and 1 as well. Mm-hmm. I just cannot pick, I can't pick against us against Minnesota right now, just because mm-hmm. I, I, we need to beat Minnesota. I'm going to say 1 and 1. Nebraska I mean, Minnesota. That's a Purdue that team we, we kicked bad. around. <laughs> we, as a Purdue team, we kicked around and Minnesota gave up 40 plus two. Just say that was a really, really two and bad oh. game. We got some and optimism. And that's there. a 2 and 7 <laughs> Purdue team. Bird Dogger 0 and 2, 38 Motorsports 0 and 2. Understandably, the mood is dour right now, <laughs> but I'm going to say 1 and 1. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. For everybody tuning in, we really appreciate it. Mogul says 0 and 2. Nathan says 1 and 1. Let's let's just beat Minnesota. Let's get the axe. Michael Morley says 0 and 2. Let's just beat Minnesota. Get the axe. On Wisconsin, a bunch more content coming up this week. Uh, Justin, Mark, and Curtis all on the channel right now. Justin, Buck Report, Curtis, um, great insight. Mark has joined three or four times, so really appreciate it. On Wisconsin, and we'll talk later. Awesome.